Hello everyone. Today is going to be a very exciting day because all of you are going to learn how to write code using Python programming language. Before I get started with today's lecture, let me take a couple of minutes to talk about today's lecture entry on the course website. Go to the course website schedule page and find the programming lecture entry. You'll notice that a few set of links have been released. You can click on link to slides to access the PDF version of the slide deck. I've released the worksheet for today's lecture. For all the worksheets, I'll be releasing two different versions, which are PDF and DOCX. Feel free to use whichever version is easy for you. I'll be going through a couple of problems from today's lecture worksheet. The rest of the problems are for you to go through on your own time to get practice. I would strongly encourage all of you to go through all of the problems in all worksheets that I release. During certain lectures, I'll be writing demo code. Whenever I write code, I'll be releasing a code link. If you click on the code link, that should take you to the GitHub page, which provides the list of files. I would strongly encourage all of you to go through the released code after watching the corresponding lecture. Learning how to program is a hands-on task, so it is important for you to get practice by going through the lecture demo code. Sometimes I'll be releasing additional examples as part of this code link that are not covered during the lecture video that should give you more incentive to go through the released code. Let me address one of the feedback form requests that I received. The request was about getting Canvas calendar access for all the due dates for this course, which includes project and quest deadlines. Right now, I'm in student view of Canvas, so you should be seeing whatever I'm seeing. You can navigate to the calendar on the left pane, and that should take you to the Canvas calendar for this course which is already populated with all the deadlines. For example, project one is due on Feb 3 and quest one is due on Feb 5. If you don't use Canvas calendar, I would encourage you to take all of these deadlines and populate them on your favorite calendar. That will ensure that you don't miss any deadline with respect to this course. I'd like to remind all of you that Late dates are allowed only for projects. Quizzes have a hard deadline. You do have some leeway in the fact that two quizzes will be dropped, but I would encourage all of you to go through all of the quizzes before the due date. Let's get started with today's lecture. In today's lecture, we are going to learn three different ways of running Python program. Then we are going to learn certain basic mathematical operators. We'll also be covering comparison and logical operators. We'll be learning different data types that can be used for those operators. Finally, we'll be learning about Boolean logic. The reading for today's lecture is chapter one of Think Python book. You can find the link to Think Python book on the course website syllabus page. I would encourage you to go through the reading either before the lecture or right after watching the lecture. Let's get started by talking about various pieces of software you need to know in order to write Python program. The first piece of software that you need to know is an interpreter, which enables you to run your Python code. The second software is an editor, which enables you to write Python code. The last piece of software, something called as Jupyter, enables you to write code using notebook format. We'll be using Jupyter Notebook extensively as part of this course. Let's learn what exactly an interpreter is. Some of you might have heard about this concept that computers understand zeros and ones. Human beings find it very difficult to understand anything which is in the form of zeros and ones. 
So interpreter is something which translates the Python program, which is in a neat human readable textual format into a machine understandable format in the form of ones and zeros. Let me give you an analogy here. The human brain is an excellent example of an interpreter. Let's consider this direction which was included as part of the previous lecture worksheet which said put 11 in the box. When your brain receives such an instruction, it will take that and convert it into a series of detailed steps. For example, move the hand down, lift your hand, move the hand up to right and lower your hand, move the hand down in order to write the number 11 inside the box. Python interpreter works in a similar way. It will take your Python code which is in a textual format and it will convert it into machine readable zeros and ones. Are you able to guess what exactly this Python code on the left here will do? If you were thinking it will display hello Meena, then you had the correct guess. How were you able to guess that without even knowing how to write code in Python language? That's because this is just in plain text format and it has very intuitive meaning associated with each of those textual words, correct? Python interpreter itself is a program which is going to run your Python program. As I mentioned, both the human brain and Python would be examples of an interpreter. Let's learn about the editor piece of software next. You need to use an editor in order to type Python code. Python programs will have a .py extension for the file. Since Python uses just plain text, you'll be able to use any of your favorite text editors. For example, you might have heard of TextEdit if you use Mac or Notepad if you use Windows. The alternate option for you would be the idle editor, which comes pre-installed when you install Python 3. So what's the difference between a regular text editor and an idle editor? It is syntax highlighting. What exactly is syntax highlighting? Syntax highlighting refers to the fact that the editor uses different colors to highlight certain parts of your Python code. For example, you have orange, purple, and green color here. Which editor you prefer is totally up to you, but I would encourage you to use the idle editor or some other editor which performs syntax highlighting. I will be using idle editor for the demos that I go through as part of this course. You are more than welcome to use any other editor that comes along with Anaconda 3 installation like Spider or PyCharm. Let's talk about the last piece of software here, which is Jupyter. The difference between regular .py Python script and a Jupyter notebook is that you'll be writing code inside what are called as cells. The excellent thing about the Jupyter notebook format is that it is able to interleave the output of your cells code along with the code itself. That is very helpful because you'll be able to visualize your plots that you produce as part of your code. This tool is becoming increasingly famous in the world of data science. The reason for that is, imagine that you're performing some analysis and you're writing your code using Jupyter Notebook. So you have all of your code and all of your analysis output in the same place. Let's say that some other data scientist wants to reproduce your work. It's very easy for you to just share your notebook with them so that they can go through your code, make any changes that they would like to make and come up with their own version. The Jupyter software enables you to write files which have a .ipynb extension which stands for interactive Python notebook file. 
unlike the .py script mode, which can be edited using any text editor, the Jupyter Notebook cannot be edited using a simple text editor. That is where the software Jupyter comes into play. You will have to use Jupyter in order to edit your notebook code or to run your notebook code. Another difference which is the key between the regular .py script and notebook is that you can split up your code into individual sections by using the cell structure. Let's learn about the three different ways that you can run Python on your laptop. The first mode is something which is called as the interactive mode. Recall that the text highlighted on line one in red color is the prompt of your shell. In order to access interactive mode, you'll have to type in the word Python or Python 3. If you're on Windows, you'll be typing Python. If you're on Mac, you'll be typing Python 3. The very first line here will show the version for Python. Make sure that it shows 3.8.5. This snapshot is a little bit outdated. Once you go into Python interactive mode, your prompt will change into triple right arrow and you can run any Python code in there. Let's talk about mode number two, which is script mode. Script mode, again, requires you to use your terminal or your PowerShell. You'll have to type in the word Python on Windows or Python 3 on Mac. And then you have to type space and provide the name of your Python script file, which will have a .py extension. An example of that here would be my underscore program .py. The Python acts as an interpreter, which enables you to run your program. Let's talk about the last option here, which is the Jupyter Notebook. Outside of this course, people will not be referring to Jupyter Notebook as a mode. I'm just listing that as a mode for consistency purposes. How can you launch Jupyter Notebook? You'll have to type in the command Jupyter space notebook and that will launch Jupyter session on a web browser for you. As I mentioned before, we'll be doing most of our work in Jupyter Notebooks throughout the course of this semester. I just want to mention one thing before we move on to the demo for all of these modes. If you're interested in learning how computers work with ones and zeros, I would encourage you to consider enrolling into machine organization course, which is CS354. Let's proceed with the demo for all three of these modes. Since I'm, sorry, since I'm on a Mac, I'm going to press command and space in order to open spotlight search, and I'll be typing terminal to launch the terminal window. If you're on Windows, go to the Windows search bar and type in PowerShell and that should enable you to launch PowerShell application. I'm going to type in the command pwd, which will enable me to see the current working directory. Most of the times, your terminal and PowerShell will directly launch to your user directory location. Let's first go into Python interactive mode. Since I'm on a Mac, I'll be typing Python 3. If you're on Windows, please type in Python. Notice that the Python version is showing up as Python 3.8.5 in line one. Once you get the triple right arrow, you'll be able to write and run Python code. For example, you can say one plus three or two plus four. Shell commands like pwd and ls will not work and you'll get an error saying name pwd not defined or name ls is not defined. How can you get out of your Python interactive mode and go back into your shell mode? There are a couple of ways for you to do that. You can type in exit open parenthesis close parenthesis and type in enter. Let me go back into Python interactive mode one more time. 
Alternatively, you can press, sorry, press Ctrl D, which will enable you to exit if you're on a Mac. If you're on Windows, the corresponding option is Ctrl Z and enter. I would recommend you to use the former way of typing in exit open parenthesis and close parenthesis because that will work for both the laptops. Once you're in shell mode, if you're on Mac, you'll not be able to run mathematical operations like 1 plus 3. My current shell, which is bash, is complaining that it cannot understand what sort of command 1 is. Just like Python cannot understand shell commands, bash is not able to understand Python code line here. If you're on PowerShell though, 1 plus 3 would have worked because PowerShell has the capabilities for you to perform mathematical operations. Let's move on to the next mode, which is the script mode. As I mentioned, I'll be using idle editor. Feel free to use any other editor that makes sense for you. If you're on Windows, it is likely that you'll have to type idle in order to launch the idle editor. If you're on Mac, it's likely that you'll have to type in idle 3. Go ahead and press enter. That will launch idle for you. So if you want to change the font size, you can go to Python 3.8, preferences, and that should enable you to change the font size. Go to the file menu, click on new file. That should open an untitled file for you. Go ahead and type the same mathematical operation. Let's say one plus three and two plus four. And let me show you how you can save your Python script here. If you're on Mac, press Command and S. If you're on Windows, press Control and S. And I'm going to navigate to Documents folder CS220 folder and I've already created a lecture fold folder. I'm going to save this file as demo and I'm going to click on save. I would encourage you to create folders for the lecture demo code as well if you're following along. If not, create the folders after watching the lecture when you go through the code. Once I save this program, I'll be able to run it by going to the run menu and clicking on run module. Alternatively, you can click on F5, which would be function F5 on your Mac laptop. What just happened? I thought we'll get the computation result here. Why did that not happen? That's because we are in script mode. In script mode, if you want to take a look at your computation's result, you'll have to use the print function call. For now, don't worry about what exactly a function call is. Just type in the word print, open parenthesis, and then your mathematical operation here, and type in the close parenthesis. I'm going to save my file and press function F5. Notice that now we got four here. What happened to the second computation? it vanished into the ether because you didn't do anything with it. Let's go ahead and add the print function call to that one as well. I'm going to save this and I'm going to run it one more time. There you go. For some reason, when I press function F5 on my keyboard, that runs my program twice. Not sure why that's happening. So as you can see, Interactive mode is different from the idle mode. Let me go ahead and close the script mode here. And then I'll talk about what's the difference between the both. Interactive mode is meant for a little bit of quick checking for you. If you're new to learning a particular programming language, wouldn't it be nicer if you can pop into it and test out a few lines of code? That is exactly what your interactive mode enables you to do. Any code that you type in your interactive mode is not saved anywhere at all. So if you want to save your code in a permanent way, you'll have to use the script mode or the Jupyter Notebook mode. We just went through the script mode. Let's go through the Jupyter Notebook mode. I'm going to type in Jupyter space notebook. 
you'll get used to the misspelling of Jupiter with a Y very soon. And I'm going to press enter. That will launch Jupyter Notebook session as a browser tab for me. I'll be able to use that session to perform navigation just like I can navigate using a shell. So I'm going to go to the same lecture 4 directory. And as you can see, demo.py is being listed here. Let's create a new notebook file by clicking on new and clicking on Python 3. Let's go ahead and rename the file to be main, which is sort of a traditional name in programming world. I'm going to repeat the same mathematical operations. This time, I'm going to write them into the cell structure, which is the rectangular box that is highlighted here. How can you run this code? You can either press the run button or shift plus enter on your keyboard. Couple of things for you to notice here. There is an in word which refers to the input cell and there is an out word which refers to the output that you got by running the cell. What just happened here? We are only seeing the output from the last computation here which is 2 plus 4. In a notebook cell, you will always be able to see only the last line of computation. So how can you get around it? You'll have to use the print function call. So I'm going to say print 1 plus 3 and then I'm going to say print 2 plus 4. Notice that this time you didn't get the display in the output box. When you print the computation result, that goes into a different output. It is essential that you not use print to display the answers to your questions for the project. That is because the auto grader is looking for your output in the out box. So you should be using the output box display. Let me add in one more computation here and I'll wrap up this video. So I'm going to say 5 plus 4 and notice that we are now getting an additional output from the cell if I rerun it by pressing shift and enter. Another thing for you to notice is that the input cell number changed from 2 to 3. Whenever you run a particular cell that's going to increase the input cell number, notice that it now became 4 because I executed the cell again. If you want to take a look at line number within your input cell, you can go to edit, sorry, you can go to view and click on toggle line numbers. That will come in very handy for you. I'll go ahead and wrap up this video here. In the next video, we'll go through demo of more mathematical operators.